Welcome to the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. My name is Rita Perez. Hello. I've been a travel advisor for over 10 years and am navigating this winding road of entrepreneurship with you. I created this podcast because I wanted to share all the things I've learned from leaders both in and out of our industry that I really wish I would have known way back then. But alas, the important thing is I'm aware of them now and I want you to be too. Ready for this week's show? Let's jump in. Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Really great to have you on again today. We have another wonderful guest. His name is Adam Shively. He is a full-time podcaster, podcasting growth and marketing coach, and the host of Podcasting Business School. Adam's goal is to teach his students how they can love their show like a hobby, but build it like a business. Adam specializes in the topics of podcast download growth, podcast monetization, audience engagement, and Instagram for podcasters. Welcome, Adam. Rita, I am really excited to be here. I'm glad that we got connected a few weeks back, and it's always an honor to share a platform when somebody invites me on their show. Yes, likewise. I mean, this all started from, I think, PodFest a couple a couple weeks or maybe months ago now. And that is the beauty of like having hands in a couple different things in business is that you can meet people in all different walks of life. So I, I'm very fortunate you presented. I liked what you had to say. And there, long story short, that's how it went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You reached out and you know, good, good or, or bad. I don't know, but now you're connected with me and, and you're stuck. So we're, we're yeah. pod pals. <laughs> that, that works for me. I'm down for that. <laughs> so how did you get started in your podcasting journey? Did you have a business and that's the reason you started podcasting? Yeah, I owned a gym for 10 years and wow. I started a health podcast first. So like okay. quick, the quick story, the background story is I used to weigh 327 pounds. I lost a hundred pounds and then uh, I started my gym. The gym did really well. And I was looking for ways that I could teach people outside of my own hometown community, what I was learning, what, you know, my own results with the results I'm producing for other people in my hometown and expand the impact. And I fell in love with the the modality of podcasting and yeah. the, that form of media. And eventually, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I transitioned full time into podcasting and now I have three podcasts and mm-hmm. and I help lots and lots of people kind of grow their show or develop their show idea. So that's that's how I initially got started though with the gym. And it wasn't necessarily to promote the gym, it was just to grow the similar type of impact that I was having in my hometown community. Okay. Okay. So how long have you been doing podcasting? Five years, Okay. over 600 episodes plus now across the board. So a lot of, a lot of conversations. Nice. Yeah. Uh, after, cause I got started last June and after I got started, I was kind of like, why did I not do this sooner after having like thought about it for a little bit? Um, yeah. So for, yeah. Yeah. For people who are travel entrepreneurs, which I think this is an awesome way, not a lot of travel entrepreneurs are getting out there showing their expertise, kind of what are the basics that they need to know to jump in and getting into the podcasting world? Yeah, well, I agree. I think the travel entrepreneur space is, you know, it's, it's the ability to niche down Mm -hmm. and talk to a specific audience is there. Uh, very similar. I help a lot of people in the real estate space, and I see it. There, there, there's some commonalities there as far as how you can structure a show okay. to grow your business, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in, in travel entrepreneurship, things like that. Uh, where it's like kind of this this destination you're trying to help people get to, mm-hmm. and so with getting a podcast launch, um, one of the first key things that you want to dial in on is the niche or the niche. We'll, yeah. we'll use niche because it sounds, I sound smarter when I say niche. <laughs> uh, <right>. so, <laughs> I, need, I need all the help that I get being fancy and smart. So you want to dial in on the niche that you're going to serve and you want to go, okay, first things first, who is my ideal mm-hmm. all-star client? Yeah. Client. All right. And write down like who they are, age, 
age range, gender, income level, interests, hobbies, you know, what, what do they really like to nerd out on? What are they obsessed with? What are their pain points that you help solve and dial in on that? And you go, okay, now I, I know what my, my avatar for that, that niche, uh, that niche down client concept that I'm looking for. And we build the show for them. And like everything from the name to the episode titles, to the content, it's for them. Yeah. It's not for you. Like a lot of podcasters get out and be like, I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And then they talk about all these things and no one listens. And mm-hmm. it's like an ego feeder thing. And that's yeah. okay. If you just, that's a form of artistic expression. That's like painting or, or journaling or, you know, writing short stories. Yeah. That's art. Yeah. All right. If you're wanting to do business, create the show that serves your ideal client. Mm-hmm. All right? So even from the name, it shouldn't be like the, the Sally Joe show. If your name is Sally Joe, like yeah. it's got to have an, an, something in the title. That's your fishing lure. And you're like, all right, what hot button words when it are you know, somebody going to search for, like you could talk to some of your best clients and go, you know, do you listen to podcasts? Yeah. What podcasts do you listen to? And look at the, t- listen to the titles. Or you go, hey, when you're looking for a podcast to, to listen to, like if you were going to search for a podcast in MySpace, what would you type in the search engine in Apple or wherever you listen and get those words and go, okay, like if you have a newsletter, mm-hmm. send out a survey, send out a survey and go, what words, like if you were going to search for a podcast in MySpace, what words would you use? Mm-hmm. And just, and then put those words in your show title or at least your show description. Yeah. Because that way we know the hot button words like that's the way that the search engine algorithm works on apple Podcasts and other podcast players is number one is the show title the Mm -hmm. next is what shows up in the show description and then what shows up in the show the episode title and description right so if we're hitting those hot button keywords in there it's gonna be very searchable which is very growable for the exact right people we just we don't want a thousand downloads just to have a thousand downloads of random people like we want a thousand true fans yeah. We build that up by building the show exactly for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. And um, makes a really great point because I rebranded to the cruise retreat podcast for my business podcast. And like, even when I go to Google, it, it helps with the SEO there, because if you Google cruise retreat, some of the podcast episodes will now pop up for that. Um, I really liked where you were talking about niching because that it's drilled down so much, I think in all of business, but especially in the travel business and people don't, it's very hard for people to be like, okay, I don't know what my, like, I can't identify it. So I kind of, I feel like this is almost like a hack too. If you're not sure what your niche is kind of like develop a plan for a podcast, even if you don't want to launch a podcast. I think thinking about it strategically, the way that you pointed it out, I'm like, huh, I think this could help people just nail it down even if they yeah. aren't doing podcasting. Yeah, it's a great marketing exercise. It's funny that you mentioned that because I, I did an interview with somebody earlier that I you know put him through some things uh, with, with niching down his brand mm-hmm. and for his show. And he ended up changing his whole brand based basically what you just said. Like he went through the process for his podcast and he ended up shifting his whole brand. He's like, it was too confusing. It was too broad. This Mm -hmm. makes way more sense. And I like that. Like I, to me personally with my brand, my shows are the tip of the spear Mm -hmm. for my brands. Like that's the first like gate of entry that people come and find me and they get to know me and I get in their earbuds every week and we get to be friends. Sometimes we get to get eyeball to eyeball connection with, you know, some different things that I do, but like, it's, it's not the same thing as a Facebook post or an email or a blog post, even like this, the deliverability, just look at deliverability alone. So if you go to Apple podcasts and you search for podcasting business school, you hit subscribe. My episodes will show up every Tuesday on your phone. They will be on your phone, hundred percent deliverability every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If Rita emails her her email list every Tuesday, we're going to high five if she has 70% of people that don't open it. You know, like if 30% open, we're like, yeah, 70% or like Facebook, put up a Facebook post, 6%. Yeah. 6%. Like it's terrible. Podcasting hundred percent deliverability. It shows up on the phone. You've got a fighting chance every single week 
until they hit unsubscribe. So they have to like take action to get you out of their life. Um, where like with the email, it just, it's the, the, the gatekeeper of the, the Gmail or whatever that decides. So yeah. I love that. Uh, if you get frustrated with social media, if you get frustrated with email open rates, podcasting might be a great option. Right, right. And I, I liked how you also touched on that when you niche down, it helps people figure out also the content they need, that they need to be producing. Because when I first started my email list a couple years ago, I was just playing at all different sorts of topics. I was like writing things on Hawaii and I don't even like really focus on Hawaii. I was writing a lot about land-based vacations and I don't really do a lot of land-based vacations. And it wasn't until kind of like I honed in onto, onto that cruise retreat. I'm like, okay, what are the pieces of this vehicle that people need to know about? And so like my last episode was about the financial benefits of doing a cruise retreat, which I would have never... The Strategic Travel Entrepreneur is brought to you by Mailbox Power. Harness the power to attract and nurture your clients through something many entrepreneurs have forgotten about, the mailbox. Create beautiful custom campaigns and automate annual mailings for birthdays and holidays. And with a pro account, get access to mailboxes not currently on your mailing list that are just waiting for the travel service you offer. Visit my Mailbox Power affiliate link in the show notes to get started today and support this podcast. It's kind of like the things that you know as the professional in your business, but somebody who like comes up to you like, yeah, I want to do this. What does that person need to know that you know? Like you have to do a lot of deep digging inside of your brain. Yeah. Well, that effort pays off because mm -hmm. when people find the Cruise Retreat podcast, it's the exact right show for them because of yeah. the name, because of the content. They're raising their hand going, this is my tribe. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the person I want to learn for, from. This is the exact content I want to learn. Now, let's compare that to the Everything Travel podcast. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they got, you know, and that's, it's just too broad now. And I know some of you are going, but I am the everything travel podcast. Well, if you want to do business and, and have your show be a business driver, maybe you can explore a little bit and you start off with more of a general base name. We can always rebrand. The more, most important thing is getting your show out there and start experimenting. Right? Yeah. So that's the first thing. It doesn't have to be perfect right from the start. I've rebranded almost every show that I've ever put out. So and it happens to the best of us. So it's okay. We're not going to beat ourselves up about that, but you get launched, you get going. And then maybe you start doing some series of episodes and you do one on one aspect of travel, one on another aspect of travel, one on another aspect of travel. And maybe each month you focus on one minor aspect. And at the end of the year you go, okay, what were my home run episodes? What was the home run content? When did I get the most, uh, engagement, the most feedback, the, you know, people that just went crazy for what drove the most business mm -hmm. brand focus on that and just go even deeper. I did that with my, my first podcasting show was called casting the pod. And it was like a little play on play on words. It's a podcast it's about podcasting. I did it. I did a hundred episodes and I found out that all the business stuff was what was driving business to me. That's what I was really interested in. That's what my audience was really interested interested in podcast download growth and making money. So we rebranded podcasting business school was born. And you know, now it, that's, that's my main income driver as far as a show. So that's the path that I would take. Step one, you just got to get launched. You got to start testing the waters, experiment, maybe do some deep dive episodes and, and try that out and then rebrand or, or kind of level down uh, to that, that niche and go deep and, Going deep versus wide, that's always going to produce more business results. And right. like I said, the exact right clients are going to start showing up. And it's much, much easier to close deals with those people because like they, you are their people, they are your people. Yeah. And it's easier to have a conversation. Yeah, you've, you've educated. So you've already done like half of the consultation from what your material is on your podcast. Yep. Kind of going, continuing on with the monetization. I know that like for us travel pros, we want people to be booking with us. 
But what are some other avenues that people can generate revenue or think of generating revenue? Well, from a podcast, obviously, like that's the end, the, the main end result is they're, they're booking their retreats and things like that with you. Mm -hmm. But like people will pay for access to podcasters. So workshops mm -hmm. are really big in the space. And you think, all right. I have interesting guests come and speak on my show and people kind of they're put up on a pedestal. So a, a common technique that I'll teach my clients is like, okay, let's once a quarter, let's put on a, a quarterly workshop where you bring on some of your most, you know, uh, anticipated and downloaded guests and they're going to teach in a smaller group and people are going to pay for that. And then you can record it and have the replay put into a course and there's downloads and, and things like that. And then every quarter that you do this, th that course gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that becomes its own product. Yeah. It's all the replays from all the presentations that have been done on the quarterly workshop. So it starts off being kind of a micro thing. I'm actually building this out now with my current health show. I've done it before. Now it's, uh, it works so well, like we're doing it again. Um, but so then you come out with two monetization forms. One is the quarterly workshop and two is the, the giant course that gets developed out of all the replay videos of all the quarterly workshops. And it just, you can continuously increase that price or you can go, Hey, it's a, you know, the whole year past 2021 or, you know, the whole, the past for the whole year and you get all the replays for the year and sell them as a, a quarter, a, a yearly course. So that's one way that's VIP cool. days are huge in podcasting. So if you teach a specific concept, like maybe you're more in the travel consultation business mm -hmm. of like, let's map out your, your ideal spring break vacation or whatever, like the spring break specialist. That'd be a great podcast name, by the way, you should go and do it. <laughs> uh, so let's say you're, you're the spring break specialist podcast and uh, er, you know, you, normally it's about like spring break destinations and results from your clients and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You can do a V a one you know, a day, like three to five hour VIP day where people pay you 1500 bucks, 2000, $2,500. And you're going to map out their ideal spring break vacation oh, in three cool. to five hours. Everything is mapped out. It's all mapped out. Maybe you're not even selling them any of the travel packages, but they're paying you for your guidance because you will save them at least that much money on their travel because of your knowledge. Yes. Right. Like people do this with the Disney thing all the time. Like we hired a Disney consultant the last mm -hmm. time we went to Disney world and she saved us way more money than what we paid her. And that's, no way. that's the deal. You know, like that's, that's, that's the offer you put out there. Like I, you're going to pay me whatever, but I'm going to save you twice as much that like, that's the pitch. That's the offer that you, you hang out there and go, mm -hmm. you can pay $5,000 or you can pay me 1500 and I'm going to show you how to pay 2,500 or $3,000 for that same experience or even more. Cause I got the connections. I've got the deals. I can package things together. And uh, so that's stuff off the top of my head. That's, that's those are a couple of strategies I'd use. That's awesome. Like I'm, I'm starting to think myself, I'm like, huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what programs do you have coming up in your business? Well, lots of things are always cooking with podcasting business school. Um, uh, the big news. So I, I'm, I'm 600 plus episodes in Yay. five years and I've never hired a VA. Oh, no so there are, there are certain things and a VA is virtual assistant for anybody that doesn't know. And there are certain things I've never been able to do that. Like people always are asking me, can you help me launch my show? Can you do podcast production and editing? And I'm like, I just don't have the manpower because I can make more money doing business consultation and helping people build their courses out, helping people make money off their shows. Mm -hmm. I finally hired a VA, shout out to Ashley. She's amazing. Yeah. And we've got the, the infrastructure in place now where we can help people launch shows. We can do podcast production and editing. And I've got so much stuff. Like I can blow other people's offers out of the water with the editing because I have courses and memberships. So it's not just editing. It's let's, let's get you a download growth club. Let's do some business consultations. Let's package all that together. Mm -hmm. So it stands out from everybody else. So that's, that's kind of the new shiny object, but you know, anytime somebody is like, all right, I've got a concept. I'd love to learn how to launch the show. Like hit me up. We can always yeah. talk, even if I'm not the, the person for you like this, 
this is something I love to do. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love most about it, Rita, is that I know a lot of people out there have thought about doing a podcast. They, yeah. they've got something to say and it's yeah. like kind of itching at them at, at an annoying level. Like, oh, I know I can impact people. I know I could, you know, increase my business, but they're just kind of podcrastinating a little bit. They're, they're, they're out there, you know, in delay mode just a little bit. And I like being able to get rid of that for people and going, mm -hmm. all right, now we're plugged in, let's go. And, and, when somebody flips on that microphone and they start, you know, spitting fire for the first time and then they get somebody that it impacts or they make their first dollar as a podcaster, that's like, that's huge. And I love seeing that, that light start to shine for them. So that's, that's kind of where I'm nerding out currently. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's kind of the, the big project for the, the near future here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if, the listeners didn't get any value. I don't know what they were listening to because you dropped a lot of awesome bombs. So thank you so much. Well, thanks, Rita. I appreciate it. Anytime a podcaster shares their platform, it's a big deal. And if you guys that are listening and did get some value, I'd love for you to leave a review wherever you're listening. Uh, hit that five-star button and uh, mention, mention this as your favorite episode so it feeds my ego a little bit. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I'm going to add Adam's information to the show notes so you can go ahead and contact him directly. And you guys have a great week. Thanks for joining me on the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. Please subscribe and leave a show rating on your favorite podcast platform. Oh, and don't forget to take a look at the show notes for important information and links. See you next week.